Well, now back time again. Definitely at least one review item in here, which is this. There might be some other stuff too, I'm not quite sure. There's quite a lot of stuff here. So, let's see what I've been buying off AliExpress and maybe eBay or whatever else we've been buying from, I don't know. First things first, let's try this one. And don't forget, if I give you links down below, I will. If there's anything you're interested in here, then look in the description below for links. Ah, relays. Okay, JQF3FF. So these are the relays that were used, and I found I had to repair recently in that thing. My signal and power supply, I did a video about that. I made a mistake with it. <sighs> yeah, it happens. <laughs> and uh, I lost series mode, it wasn't actually working correctly. So it was not actually linking between the channels as it should be. So I did a video pulling that thing apart, dismantling it, and really close look at the boards and repairing the series mode function. And uh, these are the relays it uses, these exact relays, six volt relays. So I've got a bunch of those as spares, just in case I need them, in case I make another mistake. J clips, selection of colours, it's five colours and all that. Ten units, five colours, oh, I can't remember exactly what it was now. Uh, Twenty pieces, on tip I'm guessing. Ten colours apparently. So it's little J hooks. So you make your own cables up with these. And these seem to be quite nice ones. I found these on a, some other cables I purchased and they were quite nice. They feel quite good. Time will tell how robust they are and that sort of stuff and whether these are actually really you know, particularly good contacts and stuff, but um, these are relatively cheap and they look like better quality than the other ones which are available. Because you get these other types which are just, they're just not good. So these ones look better at least, and as you can see I've got an assortment so I can make various cables up and make test leads up and things like that if I really want to. Been plenty of times I wished I had these and now I've got a bunch more. Of course whether or not I'm feeling too lazy to make a cable when I need one, that's a completely different matter. Yeah, that is a quick. So I showed these in the last mail bag, and I like them so much I bought some more. It's an Unity UTCO1 hook test clip. So these will actually push on to, um, as I showed in the last mail bag, these kind of probes. So I've got these probes in my flute multimeter here. These are not standard flute leads, these are different ones. I think these are Unity ones actually, I can't remember. They've got these extended probes on them. But these extended probes would actually fit into these adapters. So these are meant for two millimeter probes, which is what the back end of this is. Um, but I've had other ones in the past, but they're too short. The hole is too short to actually allow for long probes. Whereas these ones will actually go in. So you can actually use these probes on these clips. So, I, so I've got a couple already. I thought I'd get a couple more because they fit really nicely. Were they any good? I don't know. But, you know, Unity is coming up in the world these days. So, maybe they are. And talking about Unity, I did actually have a conversation with them a while ago about getting some test equipment to do reviews on. Yeah, nothing ever happened from that. So if Unity watches this, please do get on touch with me and, you know, we'll sort something out. But, yeah, but no. What is this? Apart from being oily and stuff, I think these are leaked. <laughs> I've got no idea what these are. <laughs> what the hell is this? I didn't order these. Oil film wiping. Degreasing film. Yeah, they've leaked. <laughs> um, but they're like a anti it's a coating but these are just calf air fresheners water repellent for windscreens and stuff but hmm, I, I think I might leave them in the bag <laughs> that is a mess now wash my hands I can carry on You've got even more packages. Right, so let's send this one. Probe test leads. I think I saw someone featured some test leads. J 
Gee, these were quick. That's only a few days ago. Sure of it. Feels like was it Thursday or Friday last week? Less than a week. I'm sure of it. Someone featured these. Who was that? Someone actually mentioned these particular leads because they they said they like them. Because they're really thin, flexible. The silicon leads. Long, sharp tip probes. Nice and sharp. So they've got a good piercing on them. And got a silicon type grip on there too, so it should be better gripping. Yeah, I, I wish I could remember who actually said they did these leads. Who was that? I don't remember. If you know who it is, chuck it down below in the comments. Or if it is you that did it, chuck it in the comments and I'll pin your comment or something. Yeah, these are nice. They do feel nice, the silicon. Nice flexible hose. Nice flexible wires. Uh, 200 degrees C. 3 kilovolt cables. Silicon rubber. 18 AWG it is. And the actual probes say 20 hyphen 1. HP hyphen 21. Not much else on them. 1000 volts, 25 amps. I don't think I'll be sticking out 25 amps through an 18 AWG wire, but uh, anyway. You always need decent cables for your multimeters. There's a lot of these multimeters, even like the fluke ones. I've got my 289 seat at the back there. A fluke 289 seat in there. That came with PVC cables. I think my 87 came with PVC cables. You know, you're buying an expensive fluke multimeter and they come in PVC cables. Now, PVC maybe, in some ways, is better. You actually get this tangling with PVC. The silicon ones tend to tangle more, but the silicon ones are more manageable. They move around more freely, you know, so, you know, it's a bit of a trade off, I suppose. But anyway, yeah, nice. Those are nice leads. Now I've got a box here, which I'll cut and put a sticker label on. What is this? What is this? Soldering iron tips. So these are some HT140 tips for secure. Maybe it's 144 OKS, 143 OFS. Because I have the secure soldering iron, this tweezer iron here. All right, it's got the standard tips on it. Now I wish to actually when they contacted me about doing a review, I would have actually said, hey, can you send the optional tips with it? Um, these tips are okay, but they're not great for thermal mass, right? If you've got a large ground plane or something, you can struggle a lot if you've got, you know, it's, if you're working on like a MacBook or something like that where there's a lot of thermal mass there, these really struggle. Um, it's okay if you're not using that kind of board, if you're not doing that kind of work, double layer or maybe four layer board or something might be alright, but yeah, these struggle. So I decided to buy the different bits for these. So we've got this knife edge type bits and the flat ones. And they're also offset slightly. Because I was going to change them see it's offset there. We can see it in that bottom one, I don't know, it's a bit hard to see. They're offset to one side. Whereas that's the issue I had with these as well, because they're not offset. I had to try and tip them around as well to try and get the tips to come together a bit better. And it's it's not great. So this one's also offset. So you've got like a left and right, they're not both the same, it's a pair. So I think I was probably going to go with this one, try this knife type because it's offset to one side and a larger thermal mass so I thought I might stick this one on it and find out if they're better or not. I expect they will be. This type of sunsuit to work I'll do. Travel adapter apparently. Um... Oh right, yeah, okay, death adapters. No, but death adapters. These things, these actually look like nice quality ones. I chose these because they've got the insulated pins. A lot of them do not have that, which means they're not really meant for New Zealand or they're the old standard or something, like maybe it's used in China, that's standard. These ones are better, feel more robust. They've got shutters on the UK one, actually. The UK pinout's got shutters on it, like it's supposed to, that's nice. Just a higher quality version of a death adapter. Yeah, so they've got shutters on them, so that one's definitely going in there. This one go. There we go, we'll go. Maybe if you need to offset something, it will. But because uh, I get all sorts of power cables and plug packs, things like that, camera equipment I buy, and I often have to use these kinds of things with them. And I've got these little cheap ones. Like, no, I've got these things, which, yeah, they're, they're a bit, uh, yeah. 
exactly um, you can see how the quality of that is you know nice and straight and what have you so yeah gives you an idea but uh, <laughs> the um, yeah, the quality is not always the best so um, yeah um, these aren't really great and I wanted some of these because I did have I found this one this was really nice this one worked quite nicely but this has been discontinued I couldn't get there anymore and this is like the next thing I found which looked like it's decent quality so different versions as well, different countries, the UK and what have you but this is obviously the Australian version which is what suits my country oh, it's a MacBook charger 60 watt charger MagSafe 2 nothing too special about that I just needed to get a few more. There's one. There's more somewhere. I did actually get one of those chargers not long ago. And I was trying to use it. And it was being weird. It wasn't behaving correctly. And I used a different charger and that one worked fine. So I think one of the chargers I got previously was 40. Other ones from the same batch were fine. So I guess I just got a bit unlucky with one of them. I've got a feeling this might be some more. Seems the boxes look the same. Yeah, here we go. Two more. That's the other two I was waiting for. Mag T, 60 watt AU, exactly the same. Let's open one up. Different box though. Same packaging. Because I got a bunch of these MacBooks recently, which I've done repairs on and, and refurbished and what have you. And um, I didn't have enough chargers for them all. I can have a whole bunch of MagSafe 1 chargers, but not enough MagSafe 2s. So I had to get some more. Now I think this is something which someone has sent me. Well, most all of these have been sent by someone, but I mean someone contacted me to say, hey, I've got this project which I've designed. Do you want one? I think that's what this is. Yes it is. This came back from a recent video I did. So it's an XGG Comms Rackhole 19XX OCX Zobald. So this is meant for the Rackhole Dana frequency counters, such as 1991, 1992, those series, where you have an OCXO which plugs in. Now I've done a video about it before, I actually made my own little thing, it's a TCX Zobald, I can't actually remember. Yeah, a few years ago now. Because I repaired a bunch of these counters, I think I've done like three or four videos on them, something like that. Maybe a bit more, can't remember for sure. Done a bunch of them anyway. Not for a while. It's been probably five years since I did one, I think. I did a video recently about these. There's a little board you could buy, which you can mount, well, which comes with one of these OCXOs on them, the used ones. And I had an issue with it not tuning correctly. And I did a video about that. And this person saw that video and said, Hey, I've got this board which will suit your record down a counter with that OCXO. And apparently he's already tuned this for me everything. It's all been plugged in, tuned and and uh, set up on a GPS DO. Now my counter I've got up here, I double checked this one because I couldn't remember exactly what I've got. That's already got a high stability 060 in it. So that's got like really, the really good one in it. So that one doesn't need upgrading. I do have, I think, two more somewhere. So this might go in one of them. I'm pretty sure the one I did the video about upgrading to a TCXO from the original basic oscillator, which is rubbish. Um, I think I sold that one. I'm not certain. But if that one is still around, this will probably go into that instead. But I'll probably do a little video on this. I'll have to look into it. But there'll definitely be links down below, down to his website. So I think he sells these. And they're not that expensive. So if you've got a record down account and you want an OCXO for it, just literally take a bolt out, unplug the old one, plug the new one in and this one's been all pre-tuned so obviously you need a stabilization period in any 060 you need to give them some warm up time i think these are like 10 minutes or something basic to get them pretty close but you want ultimate stability you know you'd have to wait hours pretty close to stable is like 10 minutes i think they're pretty quick so it's sent to me by steve from xgg comms also um it's got another website ham something hold on look it up again haminterfaces.com or ham-interfaces.com so I'll be links down below for this 
to that site so you can check those out yourself and maybe order some as well it looks really nice I wish I had one of these about five years ago and like I said if I do have a counter which this can go into I'll be doing a video about it so the last thing here at least for the moment at least I've got some more things to turn up in the next couple of days it's a Zoe meter Zotic so it's I think I know what this is there's been a few videos about these floating around the internet recently yes so did your installation tester a lot of youtubers have received these meters and done reviews on them and I'm just another one a lot of the uh, other reviewers don't actually have like the same test equipment I have on hand so I should hopefully be able to cover more things that some of the other youtubers can't cover uh, so we've got a charger here and a charging cable USB-C so this can take the batteries which are inside this and this can take some rechargeable batteries because it is an insulation tester and so it does high voltages so you don't want to have this thing connected to it on like a charging cable with it powered up or something like that because high voltages you need to have insulation and yeah I'll be doing a full review on this let's have a quick look at it now so maybe in the next week or so I'll do a review on this we'll see how we go for time I am very very busy as always so you've got some leads you've got some clips crocodile clips lead adapters to clips uh, then a couple probe because this is not only an insulation test that's also uh, a multimeter and you've got standard lead as well which look like PVC I think you fill up PVC cables in there batteries are charged so you generate high voltages through these terminals and that's the multimeter section here so this side's multimeter so you do temperature, diode and continuity resistance and capacitance frequency and voltage and AC DC voltage off and these are the insulation resistance tests so you've got 50 volts, 100 250, 500 and 1000 and it's also got relative PI and DAR resistance tests as well so these are for doing like longer term tests for insulation breakdown backlight and stuff like that as well and it's also got a torch stand yeah it's not too bad I've certainly seen worse that's not too bad actually yeah so I'll be doing a full review on this watch out for that coming out I know I've got some standard resistors but the biggest one I've got is one mega ohm standard resistor but I can go to like a gig ohm on some of my equipment However, I don't know what the maximum voltage is. I don't want to like shove a thousand volts into a piece of equipment to try and simulate one gig going with a thousand volts and then blow my equipment up. So I need to make sure I'm not going to do something silly there. So yeah, I have to look into that. So thanks a lot, Zotech slash Zui for sending that to me. And um, say so that review will come out within the next week. Other videos to watch down below. Subscribe over here if you're not subscribed and you like mailbag videos. Patreon support link over there to help me to buy equipment for mailbag videos and to share these little curiosities with you. Looking forward to sticking these on my tweezer iron. That'll make a big difference to how I use it. Thanks Steve for that. Much appreciated. Good luck.